What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and exactly two weeks after the release of Beta 1, Apple returns today with iOS 17 Beta 2. Now, Apple also released the second beta for iPadOS 17, macOS Sonoma, watchOS 10, and tvOS 17. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS 17 and the second beta because the first beta was not the greatest, as I've talked about here on the channel. But anyways, let's take a look at the size of this update so you can see it comes in at around one and a half gigs and you're going to notice right away a change here this update screen looks completely different than what we've seen before and we'll get more into that in a moment but let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new second beta it is 21A5268H so we have an H at the end of the build number which does indicate we still have quite a few betas to go as expected and you will also notice right here we have a new addition to this screen where it says for more information please visit one of the following programs and it kind of just tells you that you can go to beta.apple.com or developer.apple.com if you want to get the betas and this kind of goes with what we saw right here because on the software update page it no longer says developer beta it just says ios 17 beta 2 that's it so this could be indicative of apple just combining the developer beta and the public betas it's hard to tell right now but i found that pretty interesting that they did not include the developer part in this update but before we get away from the settings i do need to show you guys the modem firmware because that has also been updated with beta 2 it's now 2.04.00 so if you had any type of issues with the modem those very well could be resolved here with this second beta all right so now what's new here in ios 17 beta 2 and we have quite a few changes in this beta so first off just a few more things on the software update screen we're going to have ios 17 beta 1 on the left beta 2 on the right throughout this video but you will notice up top where we have the automatic updates and beta updates we no longer have the arrow next to off and developer beta again we have ios 17 beta 2 instead of developer beta 2 we have the update now button instead of just text and we also have update tonight that is a brand new option and it explains what it does right underneath and if you do schedule the update you have this new section underneath with a green check mark and it says update now or cancel updates and then perhaps my favorite feature in all of ios 17 has just been enabled in beta 2 and this feature is name drop what this does is it allows you to transfer contact information from one iPhone user to another without doing anything you just hold your phones next to each other and your contact info is transferred and this works through airdrop so you do need to have this set to everyone for 10 minutes if you want to do this with somebody so just set it to everyone for 10 minutes so I have both devices here both on beta 2 and you will notice when I put them side by side it does this little animation here it just like shoots it to the next phone and now all of a sudden they have my phone number and i have theirs and my favorite part about this is that you do not even have to have your phone unlocked you don't have to be in the contacts app you don't have to be in the share sheet anything you just have to have your phone next to each other so you'll see here my phone is locked both phones are locked i don't have anything selected you know behind this lock screen and it will just transfer that contact info to the other person with this really sick animation and what's cool is that if you go into like a photo or a file and then you go to airdrop you will notice at the bottom that we do have that feature enabled and it says don't see people nearby try holding the top of this iPhone near another phone so you can do that as well if you want to transfer like a file you know if you want to manually transfer a contact you could just hold it next to the other one and it will transfer that without having to actually press on you know their device on this list now perhaps the biggest bug in all of ios 17 had to do with the music settings crashing when you enabled crossfade but that not only has been fixed but we also have options for crossfade so if we go into our settings and go to music voila it does not crash and now we have a little slider to change our crossfade duration so if we want it to be anywhere from one second all the way to 12 seconds so i like having mine at seven seconds i tested out pretty much all of them and i found seven seconds to be my preferred now also down here you have animated art and we have this shared listening option that says discoverable by nearby contacts and this of course is related to the carplay feature where others can add music and you know change the song on carplay also with music we now have new widget sizes so for recommendations we now have this new widget size and you can see right here for top charts we also have this small version for top charts 
And then we also have this version and then the big version. So multiple new sizes for the top charts and the recommendations. We also have new CarPlay wallpaper. So if you are a CarPlay user, you will notice that you now have these new wallpapers with beta two. The shortcuts widget on the lock screen now works. So in beta one, it just took you straight into the shortcuts app. It didn't actually run the shortcut, but now in beta two, when you tap on that shortcut, it actually runs it straight from the lock screen. So this is going to be a great way to not only run shortcuts from the lock screen, but also to open up applications from the lock screen. And speaking of podcasts, we now have a new glyph icon for the library tab. And then also when we go into a podcast before, when we went into and out of the queue, it was very laggy. You can see the lag in the animation that has been fixed here in beta two. There's still a little bit of lag, a little bit of ghosting, but it's much better than it was in beta one. Heading into the clock application, we have quite a few changes here. So first off, you will notice that alarm is now alarms up in the top left. And then right under that, the sleep wake up is a little bit less bold. And the same thing applies down in the navigation bar. It's now alarms instead of alarm. And then also timers instead of timer. So of course we can now set multiple timers in iOS 17. You'll also notice up in the top left, we have the timers title, whereas before it was just a small text in the middle. Also we have the edit button up in the top left-hand corner. I'll show you that in a moment. The start and cancel buttons no longer have that really weird outline around them. You may have to look really closely to see that. Next to label, it now says timer as the placeholder instead of just saying label. And then right under here, we have recent, which is now bold and more pronounced, whereas before it was kind of gray and was really small. And the start buttons are also a little bit smaller than they were on iOS 17 beta one. And if you're wondering what that edit button is for up in the top left corner, that's just to delete multiple timers at the same time. But where it's most useful is when you have multiple timers set. So I'm going to set multiple timers here and you will notice that I'm going to set multiple one minute timers here so you can see the difference. So we're going to set one more. So take a look underneath of the timers. It now shows what the original time was. So we have three minutes, five minutes, and over here on the left-hand side, it does not say anything underneath of the timers. And then here's where that edit button could come in handy if you want to delete these timers. So I wish you could select them. I think that might be a bug. You should be able to select multiples at the same time because now there's really no reason to do this instead of just swiping. You will notice when we swipe over to delete, we no longer have the pause there. So on iOS 17 beta one, the pause button was still showing. Now it is not. Also the delete button seems to be a little bit thinner. In the notes application, if you go to a PDF, you will notice some minor UI changes here on the PDF. So before we had these three dots, now we have this gray dropdown. And when you tap on that, we had attachment display before. Now it just says view as, and you have a small, medium, and large. And before it was inverse, it was large, medium, small. And then also if you tap on the three dots up in the top right-hand corner of the notes app, you now have attachment size and it actually shows what it is underneath. So it shows large and here on beta one, it just said set all to small or set all to large. Now it just says small or large. If we head into our settings and go to the standby section, there is a new toggle for show notifications. So you can now turn off notifications on standby mode if you would like to. And it does say underneath that critical notifications will still be shown even if this switch is turned off. And while we're in settings, if we go to our general section and then to iPhone storage and take a look at the storage up top, it does appear to be a little bit larger. So iPhone, the text is larger and it looks like the bar is also larger up there. And it also seems to show more info. It seems to show more applications that are taking up our data. If we head into our privacy and security section and settings and then go to location services and then go all the way down to system services, there's a new toggle here called micro location. Now, Apple does not tell us exactly what this is, but it may have something to do with that name drop feature and holding the devices close together like we did at the beginning of this video. But not sure, Apple does not tell us any more than just having this toggle here. In the Safari settings, if we go down to profiles and tap on new profile, there is a difference here. We can see the light and dark mode option right there as our first option for the color picker, whereas before we just had a bunch of different colors. Now we only have three colors plus that one right there. And then we have three dots for the rest of the colors. So just more options for that. If we go to customize our contact poster, which is a new feature in iOS 17, if we tap on create new, you will notice some UI changes here down at the bottom. So before 
choose your poster was bolded now it's not really very bold and these buttons down here are more squared off and kind of more pronounced than they were before they kind of just looked outdated you know the ui structure of these was kind of outdated before now it looks a little bit better here in beta 2. not to mention this whole section is just more stable in beta 2 whereas before i just had a ton of issues with the contact posters and setting them up in the messages application stickers now show up for ios 16 users so i tried this in beta 1 and the stickers would not show up you can see that was the first one i sent on beta 1 and i just sent this one here in beta 2 and this is my ios 16 device on the left and you will see that we have this sticker now so stickers should work for everybody now not just ios 17 users and speaking of messages if we head into our settings you will notice that check-in now shows data instead of shared data and also before it said all locations visited now it just says full and if you go into here you will see those changes in here as well limited and full instead of current location only and all locations visited i feel like that is much easier to understand for your everyday user and also the verbiage down at the bottom has changed in the settings application we have a new fitness section so before we did not have a section dedicated to fitness but now in beta 2 we have that you see live activities siri and search notifications and also you can see how your data is managed and also for activity sharing we also have some much needed bug fixes so we have a fix for the control center airplay menu where it had these really strange squares right outside of the circular shape of it that is now gone it now looks clean as it should also the bug that would keep your location up in the dynamic island forever even after you close the application that has also been fixed in beta 2. and most importantly when i go into the sleep focus mode and then out of it it does not crash my phone and cause me to respring that was my biggest issue in all of beta 1 aside from the battery drain and that has now been resolved thankfully now if we take a look at the release notes we have pretty extensive notes here for beta 2. now a lot of this is not super noteworthy but we do have some things i want to mention so under accelerate we have the new spatial features added so this is for the new vision os the new apple vision pro headsets the sdk was just released today and now the vision os is kind of implemented in the code of ios 17. we also have the airpods features showing that talks about adaptive audio personalized volume and conversation awareness and really there's just a lot of known issues and kind of workarounds for these known issues so apple is aware of course we're only on beta 2 we have plenty more betas to go so there are going to be a lot of issues until we get close to the final release this fall now as far as bugs go i did notice a few bugs here on beta 2 just in my initial run through of the software so if we go to our wallpapers here and go to add a new wallpaper you will notice that a lot of these take a very long time to load and some of them just do not load at all like my internet's pretty fast and i'm really not seeing any of the weather and astronomy wallpapers here like i should so you may have an issue loading up some of your wallpapers after updating they may appear later but you can see some of them are starting to load in now but i did notice that was an issue that i did not have in beta one in the phone application if you go to the recents tab this section is just really stretched out and looks really odd so it looks like there's just some extra padding there that is not necessary if you go into settings and weather under privacy we have this code that should have been changed it says privacy about privacy title so just a placeholder there so that is a bug that will be fixed most likely in beta 3 but it's pretty funny it was left in there another bug has to do with the crossfade in music so if you have crossfade enabled in your music settings do not expect this to be perfect I've had multiple times now where a song will just completely stop and then go to the next song like it will stop seven seconds away it won't play any more of that song and then just skip to the next one so just know that this feature is not perfect yet and I'm also still getting the keyboard disappearing so you can see right here my keyboard has disappeared at the bottom I'm not sure what's going on I had that in beta 1 I was hoping it would be resolved here in beta 2 but as you can see it is still there in beta 2 unfortunately so now let's move on to the performance and battery life in iOS 17 beta 2 so I went ahead and ran a Geekbench 6 test on my 14 Pro Max here and I scored a 2638 on the single core and a 6754 on the multi-core both of those are higher than what we see here in beta 1. so this is the same test on the same device beta 1 on the left beta 2 on the right so you can see higher scores for both single core 
and multi-core. So that is good to see. And I will say that I've actually been able to feel the performance difference in beta too. Like Geekbench scores don't really tell you everything, but I have been using this, you know, for a couple of hours now, a few hours now, and I've been able to tell a difference. It feels smoother. The bugs are not as apparent as they were in beta one. Typing is better. I'm still having the disappearing keyboard, unfortunately, but aside from that, like the cursor and everything just feels smoother than it did in beta one. And when it comes to the battery life, I've been pretty vocal about how bad battery life has been on beta one on my main device, my 14 Pro. Now, you can see I'm at 77% battery remaining. You can go back to the beginning of this video and see what percentage I was at the beginning, but it does not feel great. I will say that. Now, it does feel a little bit better than beta one. Of course, I've not had enough time yet, so I will you know, re bring you guys a follow-up video telling you how the battery life has been after spending a few days and a week or so with the software. But so far, it feels like a tiny improvement Maybe it's hard to say. I will let you guys know in a future video, but so far it's not terrible. I will say that it's not like it was in beta one. So I, I guess that's a good thing. Now I do also want to answer the question that I know a lot of you guys are going to ask, should I update to iOS 17 beta two? If I'm still on iOS 16, maybe you were waiting for everything to get a little bit more smooth. Maybe you didn't want to deal with all the bugs that were in beta one. Should you update to beta two? And to that, I would say, I think that you're probably fine, but if you want to be sure, I would at least wait until I bring you guys a follow-up video letting you know how the performance and battery life has been over the past few days. I'm going to have that video coming out in just a few days, so you won't have to wait a lot longer. Now, if you're wondering about the public beta, we're going to answer that in a moment, but you know, if you're, if you're set on just waiting until the public beta, just stick with that. Just stick with your original plan. I don't think it's worth, you know, updating just yet if you're you know really worried about your device lagging and you can't deal with bugs on a daily basis but i think for most people you're probably fine honestly to go ahead and update to ios 17 beta 2 but if you're worried just wait a few days so i can tell you guys how my experience has been with performance and battery life and just bugs in general all right so now let's talk about what to expect next from apple so next up is going to be ios 17 beta 3 and i would expect that about two weeks from now so most likely on the week of the fourth of July. So I know that's a holiday. Apple doesn't usually release anything on holidays, but they could release it around there. So we may be looking at maybe July 5th, maybe July 6th for the third beta. Now, as far as the public beta goes, iOS 17, the first public beta, that usually comes out the following week after developer beta three. Now, again, Apple's not calling this developer beta. It's just beta two now. So we're gonna have to wait and see what they do with that. But nonetheless, the public beta should come out the following Monday. So if we do get beta three on the week of the third, that means on July 10th is when we should see the first public beta for iOS 17. But of course, things can and probably will change. And that's why you guys should stay subscribed to the channel and also why you should follow me over on Twitter. That link is down in the description below. That way you're fully up to date on everything Apple is doing. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is iOS 17 beta two. I found quite a few changes and I'm sure I'll find even more over the coming days and weeks. But if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future iOS 17 videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.